I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we are going to be talking about relationships are built on trust. Yes. Trust is an essential part to any relationship. And in order to have a good relationship with somebody, the person that you're with has to feel safe. Yes. And a big component of safety in a relationship is the way that we communicate with each other. Right. And if you communicate in a way that makes your partner feel like rejected or abandoned or negated where you're negative with them, they're not going to be able to feel uh, to trust with you. They're, right. they're going to be scared of you. They're going to hurt around you. Right. So, um, in many ways, you need a partner to feel vulnerable with you. To feel comfortable about being vulnerable or you really can't communicate the way you need to. You can't talk about how you really feel. And you have to know that no matter what dumb thing you do, you are still going to be loved and not beaten over the head with it. Mm -hmm. My partner and I made a, made a compact early on that if anybody got in a car accident, there would be no yelling. <laughs> that they'd be traumatized enough and that whatever we had to do, we'd deal with it. But there would never be a fear to call and say mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z happened. And you have to feel like, and they have to feel like they can say anything to you. Um, I messed up the checkbook, all the things that would drive your partner crazy. And if you do, you can't, you're stupid, I can't believe right. you did that. No, none of that. None of that stuff. Because and we're all going to do those things. Yeah, we are. And those of you that have had those kind of parents that would lash out at you right. or say those things to right. you are going to have a really hard time not repeating that. That's right. Yeah. And doing the same things that your parents said to you. And that's why you hear lots of times now over all of the communications that we have, you have to work at a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to fall back into what we grew up with, just kind of being unhappy about it. That's right. But there should be nothing you can't tell that person. We often are in a position where we're almost opposing our partner all the time. Right. Where it's your opinion, their opinion. Your thoughts, their thoughts. And so, one of the videos that I think is one of my most important is The Reason Couples Argue, where I talk about mirroring, validating, and empathizing. That's great. Yeah. And so, it teaches you how to communicate with your partner in a way that they can feel safe with you. Yes. You're, you're coming from a position of agreeing with them. Yes. And telling them that what they're saying is valid and true, and you can understand where they're coming from. I can remember one we, we did where the, the man kept making fun of the wife's choice in TV shows. Mm -hmm. That's a subtle put down. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to let your partner know you value their interests, even if you don't share them, and you value their opinions. That's right. right. And so if they don't feel that, they're not going to feel safe with you, and ultimately they're not going to be able to trust you. And that way they're not going to talk to you, and then you're in trouble. Yeah. And there are many different forms of trust. Obviously, you could say, can I trust my partner to go out with a couple of friends and not, you know, cheat on me? Right. Um, can I trust my partner um, to be there for me when I need them to? Yes. So there's lots of different forms of trust, and we're going to explore that today in the video. And there's also the issue of cheating, which is very, very common mm -hmm. um, and, and deadly for a relationship. That's right. Because once that trust is severed, it's right. very difficult to earn it back. Um, so I've got an email today um, from a guy 50, in his mid-50s. And he is in a woman with a woman that's in her mid-30s. Big age difference here. Okay. Now, they started as friends a few years ago. And they became serious about a year and a half ago, and they started living together at her place. 
We met through some mutual friends, and all of us used to go out in the country on weekend trips. We were both attracted to each other. Initially, she said no to us being serious and said that she would date other men. So she was up front with him. Yes, she was. And she said, I'm going to date other guys. Right. So it may not have been what he wanted to hear. But, but she was up front. Which I, I yeah. do appreciate. To her credit. We became closer and went on a trip to just the two of us. At some point during the trip, she went through my phone and discovered messages from a woman friend of mine who lives in another country. I told her that we're just friends and not intimate, and we're far apart in order to make anything work. We would have to be in the same country. Yes. So she went through his phone. Now, what's interesting about this is this woman is saying, hey, I'm going to date other guys, yet get upset at him and go through his phone? And she goes through his phone. He doesn't mention whether or not he'd gone through hers. She, but I agree, it's, it's already crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. She got upset, but we continued on the trip together as a couple and had fun. Her father is still residing in another country and her mother has passed away. She told me that her father was always screaming and was once or twice physically abusive to one of her brothers, but never to her. Her father also was quite controlling and was screaming at her mom. One of her past relationships, her boyfriend cheated on her several times and the other was addicted to marijuana. I grew up in a joint family with my dad, mom, uncles, and aunts. My dad was always traveling on business and was not much around. One of my uncles bullied me and scared me even if I had done nothing wrong, though he was not physically abusive. One of my other uncles and my mom sometimes physically abused me. Oh my. Wow. One of the other uncles and the mom? Yeah. So he had it rough. I have to wrap my mind around that. How would that... Oh, you're the little boy and you're always causing trouble? I guess so. I guess so. Un one uncle is bullying him and mom and the other uncle are physically abusing him. Uh, regarding the breakup, he said, when we got back from our trip, she asked me if I had slept with the other girl from England, to which I told her honestly that we were just friends but did not sleep together, but that we could have explored it further if we were in the same city, uh, which... I broke all contact with the ex. Yeah. We continued with our relationship, took many trips together, and were completely in love and inseparable. I shopped for the house and used to make her breakfast and dinner every day during our stay together. She would check my phone on and off and ask me if I was still in touch with that girl. She found nothing as I had cut all ties with her. So he kept his work. He did. She was jealous of me even if a woman looked at me or liked my picture on Facebook or if one of my lady friends would send me just a hello on WhatsApp. And even if I looked like a lady jogger running, she would say, do you look, do you like her ass? Oh, so this, wo this woman is really insecure. She certainly is. I mean, she is getting angry at everything. A woman... Uh, liking his picture on Facebook, um, yeah. somebody saying hello on WhatsApp. So you know if he's looking at a woman's ass, she's getting mad too. Uh, so she's really insecure. Yep. At this point, I started walking on eggshells, yeah. scared even to look anywhere or conscious of my phone, just in case a message came from one of my male friends sending me a dirty joke. It became impossible. That would be impossible. So this guy is just doomed from this, right? I mean, what? He can't do anything right. No. He looks somewhere. Oh, the wa a woman walked in front well, of him. Well, and it's the trouble. double standard. Yeah. Me, yeah. Meanwhile, she's saying... I can go out with other guys and still have this relationship, but you can't even look at anybody. And nobody can text you. Nobody can like your Facebook pictures. Nothing. No, 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 this no, guy no. is living in fear. Yeah. Right? Hardly safe. She kept on accusing me of sleeping with someone I just met or knew 
And when she had a bad dream about me, she would say that it was true I had slept with so-and-so. Were they living together? He didn't say. Okay. Uh, it used to get bad when we both had wine and she became physically violent me wa with once and said never again. I guess she meant she would never do it again? Drink wine or whatever. Make get violent. He didn't specify. I used to get angry when she was accusing me and walked away most of the time, but my anger scared her. So he finally started getting defensive yep. and lashing sure. out at her. Sure. She was Well let's remember. Um he was abused mm -hmm. by his mother and his sister? No, by his mother and an uncle. Mm -hmm. So he's been abused before by a woman. Which is why I think he might be attracted to her and scared to def you know, defend himself. Right. Or set he, could, he could get hit again. Because what happens is when you've had a traumatic past like that, something similar might come into your head, but you don't just remember it. Lots of times people feel like they're back there. With the trauma. So he could, yes, with their trauma. So he could get very frightened and feel very unsafe when this happens to her. He might feel like a little boy. I was just thinking that. Yeah. He felt like a little boy and he didn't know how to defend himself oh, again. Yeah. Uh, she could talk to any man and I had to be okay with it. I am not possessive and did not mind. My problem started when I was triggered of one evening when we were at a party and had a bit to drink. She left me and joined other people and hugged a man right in front of me. A man she did not know and had just met that day. Meanwhile, he gets a text message and she's jumping down his throat. Yeah, right. At that point, I pulled her towards me and said, I am leaving, and brushed her neck with my hand and left. Double standards? She can go, hug, and talk to anyone, and if I do it, even look at a woman, there's a major problem. Yes. Mm. This, this is terrible. This is terrible. She broke off with me, and I did the usual begging, pleading, etc. I wonder why she broke up with him. Because he was acting so childish, I'm sure. Okay. After that, she reached out to me, and we have been on and off. We even made love once. She says she loves me and misses me, but we can't be together. She even took me out for dinner on my birthday. She has gone for a holiday for two weeks now, and just the day before, she got drunk somewhere at a bar with her friend and lost her phone. Next day, she emailed me to say if I could go help her get a phone. She smoked weed and was happy and again said I love you so much twice. But we can't be together. Yeah, but you can take me to get my phone. <laughs> and with her that I'm working on myself and want to be better, mastery, and will take a trip of six months or so to a monastery. That's pretty drastic. Yeah. At which point she said, what if she changes her mind? I looked after her the whole day and then left. This is odd. Okay, he's, so they're, he's they're saying, talking about the monastery, and he spends the day with her, and was she hung over? Or? I don't know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> she has gone on the trip. She stopped communicating much and has completely stopped now. However, she is in constant touch with her gay man friend. When I found this out, I confronted her, became anxious, and, hold, and told her that she treats me badly, and she is cruel and ruthless. Wow. Yeah. I bet she, she want, he wants to say that to his mother. I bet he does. And his uncles. Mm-hmm. I apologized the next day, and she accepted my apology and said that she was shutting down her phone for a few days. However, I see her communicating with the gay friend on a constant basis on WhatsApp. We haven't talked for the last four days. Nope. We have both been seeing a local therapist when we were together, and even as I write this email. So good for him yes. for getting some help for that abuse and trauma he experienced. Yes, I hope he gets to that. He will, I think. What to do if she reaches out again? Do I continue hoping that she will come around? Alternatively, move on and no contact her, period? 
Well, there's a lot going on there's there. There's a lot going on here. I mean, and there's also a lot that we don't know. Um, I think the first thing I, I'm thinking is, um, you know, look at her behavior. Does he really want to be with this woman? Yeah, she's younger than he is, and it sounds like she's out and about in a number of different places. She doesn't want to commit to him. No, but she likes him. But if he does what she does, he gets abused. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy standard. Um, and it sounds like they had a wonderful time together on their trips. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, yeah, the, the age of difference may be showing. And she's saying, I really like you. I love you, in fact, but I can't be with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he has to take her at her word even though it makes no sense because what he's hearing is I love you mm -hmm. uh, he's not hearing the second half of the sentence yeah um, so I don't I don't think he needs to concern himself so much with no contact no. as um, he does that this is a uh, relationship that is destructive is, and terribly unfair the rules for her and for him are totally different exactly yeah i and mean that's absolutely out of the question he can't have it no and, and so he really needs to take a long hard look at this and, and i think he needs to explore how this is similar to the dynamics with his mom absolutely because we find that time after time after time um, what goes on early in our lives with our relationships has an uncanny way of repeating in our adult relationships. That's right. And we, we ask everyone to tell us about their family of origin and, and try and get any, any parallels. And it's not that we are surprised when we get them, it's kind of what we're used to. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not good for him. He did at one point walk out of that party. Good for him. Yeah. It may be the first time he was able to stand up for himself. I would say that, based on what I've read, I would think she has an avoidant attachment style. I would too. And that his is anxious because, you know, of the abuse he faced, so he's always af afraid of abandonment. Now, has either of them been married before? Um, Nobody I'm says, not sure they? if he mentioned marriage, but I know he's quite a bit older. I mean, yeah, he's, he's in his... 20 years older. Uh-huh. But, I mean, that, that age difference has been known to work, but here, in this case, it's not working. No. I mean, she's... She treats him terribly. I think so. Well, the double standard. You can't look at anybody. Um, Meanwhile, I can go out with whoever I want. Yeah, and in fact, you can't even get texts from friends. It reminds me of a case I once had several years ago where the girl was so insecure, she made the guy, and he, they were both quite young, made the guy walk around with his eyes half shut. He could only look at the ground because he couldn't look around for fear he might see someone else. My God, that's awful. Um, no, I mean, that's not anything anybody can or should live with. No. No. So he's absolutely right in standing up for his rights. And I think this is probably one of the first times he's done that in, in his, his life. In his life. That's my sense, too. Yeah. So I want to applaud him. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He's going to a local therapist, and I think that's fantastic. I think he needs to make himself the priority here. Yeah. Don't, get your, don't put yourself back in an abusive relationship. No. Okay? Let's be the honest here. The therapist sees her, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which but, is tricky ground for the therapist. Yeah. I'm sure she likes both of them. But she's got to be honest with both parties. He isn't going to get his needs met in this no, relationship. No, he's not, no. And I don't think he should even consider getting back with her until he works on his own issues. I mean, he's yeah, well, tolerating where, abuse. Where he can say, yeah, I'm not going to put up with abuse. And no matter what happens, never, ever, ever put up with abuse. No. That's not worth it. You gotta, you gotta put yourself first in these yes. kind of situations. Yes. And I would not concern yourself with no contact and how or if she will come around. I mean, you got big issues going on here. You've got trauma. You've got abuse. And I think you have a fair amount of alcohol. It sounds like they have a pretty active social life with mm -hmm. others whom they both know. And we have several mentions here of at least her getting drunk. We don't have it for him. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I don't hear a single thing that would make me optimistic they could work this out. Other than they at least have gone for therapy, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the only thing. But that's a good thing. That's but I, mean, thing. I, I, I would not rush into this situation anytime soon. Absolutely and I would think not. long and hard about, do you really want to date a woman that is going to go out with other men 
and you are held to a different standard. And then she's going to be jealous of you and literally try to curtail your activity. No. Yeah, this I don't think is a healthy relationship no. at all. And I would not advise trying to get back in it anytime soon. No. With or without a therapist. I think he made a right decision. The day he made that left that party was his best day, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I was you, I would leave her alone. I would, you know, figure out what's gone on in your life that you would tolerate this kind of abuse and uh, allowing somebody to make you feel like you're walking on eggshells. I mean, you can't be in a relationship where there's no trust. No. And someday I'm going to, to write an article on eggshells. I am too through with eggshells. <laughs> um, very rarely do I see any people who are connected by family or, or marriage who don't talk about having to walk around eggshells on the other. And you know those little signs you see with a red line through it? I've never seen one. I need someone who can draw one. Oh, like the no, Ghostbusters thing? Yeah, no eggshells. <laughs> no eggshells. Yeah. No, it's not safe. This relationship is not safe in any way, emotionally or no, no. physically. No. She she hit him one time. Yep. And she said, oh, I'll never do it again, but and she, then he he's said, got just, an alcohol problem. Just like every other woman in my family, you hit me. Yeah. So the last thing I think you need to worry about is no contact. I mean, or Nana, what she does if she reaches out again. If she reaches out again, you know what I would say? I'd say, look, look I do care about you, and I do love you. I'm assuming he loves yes. her. Yeah. But, but this relationship that we've had is not working. It's not healthy. And I need to work on myself. You need to work on yourself. And if we can maybe work it out in the future where we can treat each other fairly and it's safe for both of yeah. us, then we can explore it. Yeah. But until then, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to run around with the eggshells while you just go around doing whatever you feel like. Really tough situation, yes. huh? Yes. I'm sorry for both of them. Yeah. A lot of abuse here. Yeah. So, that's our take on it. No eggshells. No eggshells. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.